What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. And today we are using an old laptop as a virtualized PFSense router using VMware Workstation Player 16. A big shout out to Michael Pander who requested this video. So let's jump right in. So these are the hardware you're going to need. Took network cables, your preferred lane, one USB network adapter, link in the description down below. If you have various users, you can use a network switch. Now let's head over to our laptop and download PFSense 2.5 ISO. Let's open our favorite browser and let's go to google.com. On Google, let's search for PFSense. It's usually the first item on the search result page. Now let's head over to the download section. Here, we are going to select AMD64 as our architecture and DVD ISO installer, and we click download. This can take a while depending on your internet connection. After our file is done, now we have to decompress it to be able to use it on VMware. Now we can start to create our virtual machine. On VMware Workstation Player main screen, let's click on create a new virtual machine. Let's check the option installer disk image file and we can choose our pfSense ISO file that we decompressed earlier. After we click next, we have to name our virtual machine and choose our destination folder on our computer hard drive. I personally like to use an SSD drive for this matter. I always like to give plenty of space on my virtual hard drive just in case. Let's customize the virtual hardware for this virtual machine so we can tweak the CPU and RAM. For CPU, I'm going to use two CPU cores and two gigs of RAM. You guys might be asking, hey, don't you have to add the second network adapter? And the answer is yes, but later on. After we are done, we click finish. Now, VMware Workstation Player is loading the installer from the ISO that we chose earlier. After the PFSense installer has loaded, let's click Accept, OK to install PFSense. Let's select our default here, OK, and we wait. Now, PFSense initial setup has loaded. No, we don't want to set up VLANs at the moment. We have to select our one adapter, in this case is EM0. Yes, to proceed. The initial setup is done. Now, we can navigate to our web configurator using the IP address listed. The default username is admin and the password is PFSense. We are greeted with the PFSense uh, setup wizard. Let's click next. Next. We can add our DNS servers. In my case, I use the Google DNS servers. I uh, choose my time zone that is minus four or America Santo Domingo. Click next and click next. Let's add our password that we don't forget and let's click next. PSN's now is going to reload so we can go ahead and click finish. and accept the copyright and trademarks agreement. 
and there we have it now we can connect our additional network adapter and assign it to our virtual machine Let's configure our new network adapter in PFSense. You can see that the adapter is available and we click add. Let's click on the link to configure the adapter. We have to enable the adapter. Let's choose IP version 4 static 192. 192.168.01 Our mask is size 24 and let's click next. We apply the changes. There we go, our changes have been applied. We can go back to PSN's web configurator main screen. Now we have to set up the HCP on our new LAN interface. So my range is going to be 192.168.0.100 through 192.168.0.200. So we're going to have like about 100 hosts, DNS servers are Google DNS servers 8.8.8.8 and we click save. You can see that our changes have been applied. Now we go back to PFSense main screen. Now it's time to connect our one adapter to our network switch so we can have internet access. In my case, I'm gonna connect it to my server network switch. Perhaps on your particular case, you can connect directly to your internet service provider router. In my particular case, this switch will provide internet access. Next step is to connect our Ethernet cable to our USB adapter that we added to our virtual machine earlier. Now, we can go ahead and connect our computer. If you have more than one, you can use a network switch. Let's head over to PFSense main screen we can see that our LAN adapter is up. What I personally like to do is add the network traffic widget to the dashboard so I can monitor the internet traffic. Usually it's all the way down. I like to drag it up in a place where I can see it. Now let's head over to our demo PC and do a basic network speed test. You can see that we can get around 40 megabits per second. That means that our internet connection is working through PFSense. In my particular case, I have two internet connections. One is 50 megabits per second and the other one is 200 megabits per second. Since my PFSense that is running on a WatchGuard XCM5 is running on failover and low balance we can see that this time it used my 50 megabits per second internet connection in this particular case i didn't have to configure a default firewall rule because it already created for me when i configured the lan interface depending on your setup you may have to set up a default firewall rule to allow traffic to your LAN or whichever the case will be. This particular setup can be run on a home environment where you have an old laptop laying around and you need a router to control your internet access to your brothers or sisters or anyone who comes into the house. So guys, a big shout out to Michael Pender for requesting this video. If you guys are interested on a particular video, please leave it in the comments below. I will be happy to sit down and get to work. Remember to give a like, comment below, 
subscribe to the channel and ring that bell for future videos. Everything I use is in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye bye.